Hello everybody, and welcome back once again to Let's Play Crusader Kings 2 Race for an Empire with the Flemings. Yes indeed, in the last session King Bohemond managed to secure a peace within England now, all the wars have ended, in fighting has finished, and now they cannot start any more wars. He also managed to change the succession law, which enables females to inherit the throne of England should the situation arise. And of course, became affectionately known for his troubles as the Careless, which I'm sure he's absolutely stoked with. He's just turned 64 on the 4th of January, it's now the 6th, a couple of days ago he celebrated his 64th birthday, and he's not quite celebrating just yet. He's achieved quite a bit in his uh, reign, but there's still one thing bugging him. He's not the King of Ireland. Got Chalk was brought across to do that for him, and he's failing miserably. He was trying to fabricate a claim on Kildare. Now I've just noticed that Kildare is actually the home of the Irish band Mercenary Group. This is their captain. I don't know if that affects the fact that we can get a claim here, but just in case it does have some kind of a hindrance to us, Got Chalk has been moved to Dublin, where I'm sure there's been a lot of finger pointing and threats made that if he did not get this claim before I die, I'm taking you with me, boy! So, uh, yeah, he's hopefully been whipped into shape and he'll have a claim on Dublin in the not-too-distant future. So that's that, and that is going to be our immediate concern. Our long-term concern, of course, is claiming even more lands, even more kingdoms. We have Scotland. We need Scotland, or we need some of the lands within Scotland to be, enable us to create this empire that we so desperately seek and crave. Now I look to the claimants of Scotland and there aren't many young suitors that we could marry with our son, or our grandson rather, because if we look to the, uh, the, the, the tree, the family tree, Turstin is next in line and after him it's going to be Turstin Jr. So Turstin Jr, although we can't control who he marries because he's not in our court, but Turstin Jr is not betrothed yet and therefore a, a betrothal between him and a choice candidate, a choice female with a claim on either the Kingdom of Scotland or even the Kingdom of France would be nice as well for the future, means that their children in a couple of generations time would have these weak claims passed down onto them. So his marriage is pretty important. And therefore, once we control Turstin, we can control his marriage and uh, secure some claims for the future. Now, Scotland is elective at this moment in time, which means that, uh, well, it's not going to pass down due to some sort of family tree, family line. It's going to pass through election. So I was thinking, and I don't know if this is the case, and I'm sure people will correct me if I'm wrong, but when we had de jure land within the Holy Roman Empire, even though we weren't de facto part of their empire because we were de jure within their realm, we had a vote in the election. If we take one of Scotland's de jure duchies, does that self-same principle not apply? So if we were to secure, say, the, the duchy of uh, Galway and become the Duke of Galway for our troubles, would we not then have a vote in the in the in the, in the royal election of Scotland? Because if we do, we could stick ourselves forward, etc., etc. Worth considering. Not sure how that works, but uh, that could be one way in to secure in Scotland. Because when it comes to marrying eligible females with weak claims or even strong claims that we can marry our grandson to in the future and and have their children have the claim passed down to them, the likelihood of that happening is very slim at the minute because the youngest female with a claim is uh, 19, so in 7 or 8 years time she's going to be mid-twenties and, well, let's face it, past her prime. Plus, so uh, down here in France then, I did the same sort of thing and noticed that, uh, well, there is a young Whippersnapper here, by the age of seven, Aelo, she has a weak claim on the Kingdom of France. She's the same sort of age as Turstin Jr. So if we're to marry those two together, their children would be uh, high, would have a weak claim on the Kingdom of France. 
definitely worth considering. So, uh, very, uh, very strong match, I'd say. But again, <coughs> we can't directly influence that just now anyway, so it's just worth looking at uh, for interest's purpose. So we'll just set the time, ticking over slowly and steadily as we continue on trying to get this claim, which is the main focus. And we're going to now consider a couple of things from the last session that was highlighted. First of all, thanks to Young Gronard, I asked the question if long bow ranges, which I can construct in my settlements, if they affected the retinue or just the levy, apparently it is just the levy. So uh, no immediate rush to upgrade them at the minute. And also thanks to Rex the First, who this is I don't know if this is a new feature since I last played the game, but apparently you can ask the uh, the Pope if he would grant us a claim on lands and titles. Very unlikely for that to happen, but not impossible. So any of these lands within Ireland, any lands within Scotland, if the Pope didn't like their ruler and liked us enough, he would grant us a claim without the need of having to fabricate it. I've looked through the various lands and in the hope that we could just pill for a quick land in this fashion. Unfortunately, that was not a possibility. But it's definitely worth keeping in mind for the future. So thanks for that. Did not know about this new feature. And you've been crying out. Crying out for Bella the Bastard's children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, whoever they may be, Bella's descendants, to come back to our court so that we can see them, have them here, relive some old memories. So, there you go, you see, Duke Frey. He is the Duke of Flanders. He's got some du jour land within the Holy Roman Empire. Although he's not part of it, he still can vote in their election. So this must be the same for Scotland, surely. So if that is the case... If we want to take part in their election, all we need to do, surely, is just grab one of their, one of their duchies. Okay. To the most excellent... Why, thank you. King Bohemond, your wisdom and mercenary are legendary. We propose that Elderick of France and Engeltrold von Whistleback. Uh, <laughs> first of all, let's see if she has any claims that are going to cause some concern. Duchy of Colm, no. She's just a courtier. <clears throat> and you are the Prince of France, and I accept, yes. Go forth and have a good time. Get out of our hair. Okay. I'll keep the game paused then, or shall I keep it ticking over? I'll keep it ticking over just on the one speed for now. So we're going to go into the dynasty tree. We're going to go to the old dynasty tree here, and we're going to just get across here. Bella is great uncle to Bohemond. Of course, he was sent away to Russia, married his wife, I can't remember what she was called, and had five children. Elizaveta, that's her. So they were married, they had five children together. I've already checked this out. The youngest daughter of said children had four children of her own. So now we're looking at uh, Bella's grandchildren here. These are Bella's grandchildren. One of his grandchildren is actually Grand Prince of uh, Sviatoslav of Cherson. So, uh, one of them's made a name for himself. Ooh, 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 ooh that's, actually quite a, that's actually quite a vital piece of information here. Vital piece of information. I'll tell you why in a second. Um, so, I'm going to pause it for this moment in time. So, they had, she had four children. These are grandchildren, Bella's grandchildren. And as we go down the list, these are Bella's great-grandchildren. And these two here, Svetazar and Simeon, both of these guys are happy to come to our court. So what we're going to do is we're going to invite them. You wanted to see some of Bella's descendants coming across? Well, here they come. So they are the only two that would accept from this line. 
And his son Roman would also accept. So again, another great grandchild of Bella's. And you would think that as the oldest son, he would get a clay, but I think it must be him that's the heir. Yeah. So he's not quite heir. Now, although I've checked these guys out, these three great grandchildren of Bella who are coming across, they don't have any stats to harp on about. They don't seem to have any proficiencies, any specialties that they're going to offer to my kingdom. But they're family. Plus, all of them are coming with some form of a claim. All of them have claims to the various counties or duchies in, in Russia. So in the future, should we require to expand our empire further afield into deepest, darkest Russia, perhaps? We could give it a blast, pressing some claims for our family members. So that's worth considering. Okay, so that is that. So we've got some, uh, some of Bella's descendants coming as per your wishes and requests. Enjoy and see what they get up to. Anyway, the reason why I said that that was quite an interesting piece of information, the fact that uh, the Pope's happiness with us has increased due to the hard work of our court chaplain, is that because his relationship has increased, we're just going to once again double check this option here to make a claim, because his, in, his uh, happiness has increased and therefore the likelihood of him allowing us to claim a title has increased with it. No, none of these are still available. The closest claim, I think, was in Scotland. Keep going. There you go. We could get a claim on the Duchy of Galloway. Request a claim on this title. This request might be accepted. So because his, his, his relationship is increased, he might consider this claim here. Now this is big, big news indeed. Big news here. This would be denied. I'm just going through them all individually. Uh, would be denied. Would be denied. The, the Isles would be denied. Ross is just a pure little county. So yeah, none of them um, are going to happen. But this, this here possibly could. And we are not claiming a poxy little county here. We are claiming an entire duchy. What did I just say about claiming a duchy in Scotland? It might give us an elector title, an elector position in their, in their uh, kingdom. This is big news indeed. So uh, without wanting to harp on too much, let's get this thing pressed. Now, first of all, I just want to see Scotland's strength. They have about 5,000 levy. Well, compared to our how many thousand that we have? 19? 14? 16? They are powerless to stop me. They are powerless to stop me. So this could be our first foothold into the Kingdom of Scotland. Holy cow. So we're asking the Pope to grant us a claim on the title Duchy of Galloway. Fosters a hundred piety, we have that in abundance, and it would change his opinion towards us for a little bit, which is not a major problem. Shall we live? So we are going to submit a request. I'm sure our court chaplain is doing the necessary sweet talking about how this duke is an evil person and he doesn't deserve these lands. He is ashamed of Catholicism. Surely the mighty King Bohemond, your good friend and devout Catholic, would be a far better ruler of such mighty land. So the glorious King Bohemond, Roman something or other, is coming along to our court. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Sort of like a fourth or fifth cousin, isn't he, really, to the king? And he's coming as well, forthwith. Come along for the ride, people, come along. It's like an invasion here. And another one comes along. Come with your children, your wives. Come and enjoy yourself. Look at this. To the pitiful. Oh! Oh, I was 
was so excited! To the pitiful King Bohemond, your low character is a subject of Greek plays. Your request for a claim has been in you... Oh my goodness! Are you serious? You, you said you'd maybe consider it. You've said you might consider. Look at that. It should be considered. It should be go through. Four positive crosses versus three negative. Why? Why is he denying us this claim? What is wrong with this stupid pope? It's a good job I didn't pay him money for an opinion, isn't it? Because it would have been money wasted. You awful man. I'll try it again. I'm, just, I'm, I'm desperate now. I'm, King Bohemond's getting desperate in his old age. He wants something. Just give me something. Give me something, please. What you stupid... No. Now he's saying no. 100% no. We've asked once and he's denied us. Oh, man. So close, yet so far. Yeah. Right, let's get the opinions uh, ranked in order. Here we go. A lot of these Russian people have come across my... My long removed cousins all coming across for happy times. They all hate us. Never mind. As I say, we'll see how they fare. They're in our court at least. Don't have anything worth uh, worth our time and effort in terms of, of, of council positions, but. Uh, I'm sure they're catching up on old times, you know. The Byzantine Empire, as we now bump it up to two speed, as we've pretty much completed all we need to complete to uh, get things on an even keel. He's attacking some kind of satrapy, what's that? The Gurid satrapy in the second Byzantine holy war for Mesopotamia. I think, is it down here? Is this is this part of it? Part of the war effort, is it? I don't know. But anyway, the empire looks to be thriving right now. France is in peacetime, as far as I can see. Oh, they're claiming, trying to claim Poitou. Where's Poitou? Ah, is it here? Is it a duchy? No, it's a duchy of Aquitaine, isn't it? Duchy of Aquitaine. Oh oh, 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 what's going on here? The Dutch, the Duke William of Norfolk, I think he is, is uh, passed away. No longer spy master. Oh dear. So his son, Duke William the Fourth of Norfolk, has inherited the title. His opinion of me is positive, not quite as positive as his father's was. I think it was quite high. It, was, it might have been a hundred actually. So it's a bit of a shame, but as long as he likes us, and as long as he bends the knee, it's all we can ask. And we need a new spy master, right? We need this man. We need you. We need you, buddy, to do some work. Actually, some factions still cracking on here. Twenty percent to lower crown authority. The leader is Earl Sylvester of Rawls, no less. So uh, why don't you bob across and get him to change his ways? If you don't mind. Right, sorry about that. Had to uh, pause it for a wee second. There is actually some kind of a war going on here. We've noticed here that there's obviously armies marauding about the place. Uh, so Scot these are Scottish troops. I don't know what they're doing. They are attacking King Oystein of Norway in the second Scottish-Norwegian de Jour war over this place here. Katniss. Katniss. Whatever it's called. They are fighting for it. And uh, who is winning? Who is winning? Uh, King Duncan the Gentle is winning. So Scotland are winning very slightly. Typhus has broken out in Cornwall. And Richard de Normandy has contracted consumption. Which, <gasps> look at this. Oh, a plague. A mega plague of all epic proportion. Right, yeah. So we employed a new spy master. He is going across to here to try and put a halt to that lower crown authority faction. It's not going to take root, but we just give him something to do. Duke Richard of Hereford II has inherited Duchy of Hereford and other titles from his father, I imagine, because he's died. And somebody's found an, founded an independence faction. I mean, come on. Come on, really. Really. Are you stupid? Are you stupid? Who is he? He's my half-brother. 
You give these people lands and titles and all they do is stab you in the bloody back, you know? They're not going to take root. So the Duchy of Hereford then is here. Let's have a look at how he views us. Oh, he loves us! Content. I'm gregarious. We're both charitable. We share common interests. Good on you. I like it. I like it. In fact, all of our main vassals, apart from one or two, uh, do like us. In fact, ooh, Duke Adam of Bedford. I doesn't, uh, doesn't think we're A-OK, -okay by the looks of it. What do you got problems with, eh? You got a problem, buddy? You got a problem with us? Well, tough. Tough, tough, tough. Okay, so, uh, another thing which was brought to my attention, and once again by uh, young Grognard, who's offered me tons of advice so far, which has proved invaluable. Retinue here. We do have the retinue of completely taken over by uh, Longbowman. Ugh. Oh, whoop de doo the Pope likes us even more. Well, he didn't like us enough to give us a claim on some land, did he? Hey? Stupid man that he is. Uh, yeah. Oh, Jihad once again for Anatolia. It's no concern of ours. Let them crack on. Oh, and another marriage proposal. Who's this this time? This is my good friend... Uh, it's my son-in-law, of course. Uh, Castile, yes. He wants to propose that here... My granddaughter... Marries my half-brother. Matrilineally. Well, let me just get my bearings here and see what this implication has for us here. He has claims on Normandy, he has claims on Brittany, <coughs> claims on a hell of a lot of things here. And you want him to marry matrilineally? So that their children can have these claims in the future? No, I don't bloody think so, mate. I do not think so in the slightest. Regular marriage? Perfectly fine. I, I think that's how it works. I this, All this claims business, it just sometimes goes over my head. It's, it can get very complicated, you know. Uh, what do you want now? You want to marry Nicholas Georgievich matrilineally? He has claims as well. This is too... Surely this is too risky. This is too risky to marry such a man with claims to, to, to other kingdoms. I mean, I don't think their kingdom is particularly strong, to be perfectly frank with you. Let's have a look here. No, it's a pretty small kingdom, actually. Hmm. Who is he? He's also my half-brother. I don't know. Is it worth it? What if in the future they get more powerful? They get ideas to kill me. This could... I don't think this is going to cause a major issue. But I don't want it, no. I don't want to run the risk, I'm afraid. Sorry, old son-in-law, old buddy, old pal. I just don't quite think it's appropriate. Ooh. 